Dear students, greetings of the day. I, Dr. Sabiha Azmi, very humbly take this opportunity to present a paper of my colleague Dr. Shaminaz Banu, who is an assistant professor at Irving Christian College, Allahabad, which is a constituent college of the University of Allahabad. The paper is titled Women Writers on Conflict in the Arab World. The learner ex is expected to be aware of some of the issues confronting the Arab world. The objective of the unit is to draw attention to some of the significant writing being done by women and the initiatives in highlighting the consequences of war. The key words which you will get through in this, in this text are Middle East women writers, conflict zone, victims of war, sanctions, personal narrative. In the past, war only burnt homes, but this time do not be surprised if even loneliness ignites. In the past, war only burnt bodies, but this time do not be surprised if even shadows ignite. These are the words of Sahir Ludhianami in his famous poem Parchaya. The truth is that human beings have always engaged in wars since the beginning of civilization. Wars have been fought for power, supremacy, money, ego and many other reasons. But whatever the reasons may have been or are, women and innocent children are the worst sufferers. Kamila Shamsi in her novel Burned Shadows made the following statement about the disastrous impact of war on people on whom it had been has been forcefully imposed. War is like a disease until you had it you don't know it but no that's a bad comparison at least with every at least with disease everyone thinks it might happen to them one day. You have a pain here, a swelling there, a cold which stays and stays. You start to think maybe this is something really bad, but war continues, but war countries like yours, US, they have always fought, fought wars, but always somewhere else. This is why you fight more wars than anyone else. The disease always happens somewhere else. It is only why you fight more wars than anyone else, because you understand war the least of all. You need to understand it better. Writing is not only the medium of expression, it is a medium accessible to women and many use it to articulate the experiences and raise the voices. They use it to tell the stories that others are not likely to tell stories that might never be told at all, other women's stories, narratives of anguish and deep suffering, but also narratives of unbelievable heroism and courage, of the indefe indefatigable human spirit. Women writers of the Arab world have done commendable work by exposing to the world the realities of the ground in war affected zones. Some of them are Fatima Mernissi, Daily, uh, Daisy al-Amir, Najd Sadiq al-Ali and Zainab Salbi. Allow me to introduce Fatima Manisi. Born in a middle class family in Morocco in 1940 and considered a pioneer of feminist writing in the Arab world and an internationally acclaimed Islamic feminist, Fatima Manisi is a sociologist and a teacher by profession currently working in Muhammad V University of Rabat. As a sociologist, she has done a substantial amount of field work mainly in her country Morocco. Working for the UNESCO and the ILO, she conducted many interviews in the late 1970s and 1980s in order to map the prevailing attitudes towards women and work. She has written extensively on women's issues women in Moroccan society as well as on women on, and Islam from a historical and contemporary perspective and has been widely published in magazines, journals and newspapers. Because of her extensive work, she was uh, awarded 
Prince of Asturias Award along with Susan Stuntong in 2003. In her writing, she analyzes the historical development of Islamic thought and its modern manifestation and critiques women roles in it. This she does by a detailed investigation of the nature of the succession to Prophet Muhammad. She questions the validity of some of the hadith on the issues of subjugation of women in Islam, but not in the Quran. The central themes of her writings are based on the life of men within harems, questions of gender, a women's place and role in the public as well as the private spheres. Her works have been written in both English and French and therefore have a worldwide reach. Her works in English include Beyond the Veil, Male-Female Dynamics in a Muslim Society published in 1975, which was revised in 1985 and 1987. Doing Daily Battles, Interview with Moroccan Women, translated by Mary Jo Lakeland, published in 1998. The Wheel and the Elite, a Feminist Pres Interpretation of Islam, published in 1992. Forgotten Queens of Islam, published in 1993. Women's Rebellion and Islamic Memory, published in 1993. The Harem Within, which was retitled Dream of Trespass, Tales of a Harem Girlhood, published in 1995. Shehzade Goes West, published in 2001, and Islam and Democracy, Fear of the World, published in 2002. She believes in the theory that Islam does not subjugate women, rather it celebrates female power. In Beyond the Veil, Male-Female Dynamics in a Muslim Society, Mernesi argues that Islam had given many rights to women. Indeed, in contemporary society, the fact so many women are working in various sectors in Arab society, including show anchors, films and video stars in more than 500 plus Arab satellite channels telecast around the globe is evidence of this. Sexual inequality, which is a major issue and hindrance to women's progress, is not peculiar to Islamic societies alone, but is a global phenomenon, a problem common to both Western and Islamic societies. In the book, Manasi states that there was a perception among Muslim theorists that women are active sexual beings, required stricter regulation and control since inherent in that sexuality was a potential danger to civilized society, a perception not confined to the Islamic world alone, but found in patriarchal societies and religions the world over. However, with the advent of modernization, the prevalence of traditional Muslim structures are becoming less stringent and are giving in to more flexible arrangements compatible with the modern world. Further, she clarifies her viewpoint through popular source materials, exploring the disorienting effects of mod modern life on the present condition of male-female relations and examines the male-female unit as a basic component of the framework of Muslim orderliness reflecting the sexual dynamics of Muslim worlds to the readers. Beyond the Veil, Male-Female Dynamics in a Muslim Society is regarded as a book in classic book in the United States. Earlier, it was not available in the Britain, but now the revised and updated version is available around the globe. Yet another writer, Daisy al Amid is a renowned and acclaimed write, Iraqi writer, a poet and novelist. Born in Basra, Iraq in 1935, she was educated at Baghdad and Cambridge, earning her PhD in Arabic literature. The publication of her book, The Waiting List, Iraqi Tales of Alienation, earned her widespread recognition and made her one of the leading female writers of Iraq. Her stories express deep concern about the plight of women and portray their experiences during the turbulent times in the Middle East, especially during Saddam Hussein's regime in Iraq and the Lebanese Civil War. She is the author of five published works focusing mainly on women-centric themes. These are The Distant Country That You Have, 1964, Then The, then the Wave Returns, published in 1969, in the Vortex of Love and Hate, published in 1979, Promises of Sale, Promises for Sale, published in 1981, The Waiting List and Iraqi Women's Tale of Alienation, published in 1994. 
Daisy Al Amir wrote The Waiting List An Iraqi Woman's Tale of Alienation in 1994 in Arabic. This collection of stories was first published in Arabic in Lebanon as La Ihat Al Intizar and was later translated into English by Barbara Parmenter with an introduction by Mona Mikhail. Among her five publications, it is considered the best. The stories in the book are located in Iraq, Cyprus and Lebanon and describe the life of a single woman, a cultural and political refugee who is a divorcee but educated and affluent. The impact of the rise of Saddam Hussein as an Iraqi leader, the chaotic atmosphere prevailing after the Lebanese war and its impact on a woman's life and her single-handed struggle for survival as well her experiences in the Middle East society are very sensitively described by Al-Amir. With her portrayal of strong women characters in her fiction, Daisy Al-Amir has carved for herself a prominent place in the contemporary world of Arab fiction. She is not only a novelist but also a poet who is a follower of a long tradition of Iraqi poetry and influence manifested in the sensuality of her prose writing. But there is also a blend of existential elements in her works as she tries to find out and maintain a balance between fate on the one hand and the Cap Capricus riotous world she inhabits on the other. In her writing, her treatment of time and space is minimalist. A surreal style that depicts the disappointments of life through the experiences of her own memory. While struggling alone, without family, in a chaotic state, moving from one country to another, she explores and interrogates the meaning of life and in the changing world she inhabits. Another important writer, Najde Sadiq Al Ali, is an activist who has been involved in the women's movement of Egypt since many years. Her father is Iraqi while her mother is from Germany. She has been working as a professor and chairperson of gender studies in the Center for Gender Studies at the School of Oriental and African Studies, SOAS. She holds the prestigious position of the President of the Association of Middle East Women's Studies, AMEWS, and is also a mem member of the Feminist Review Collective. Besides being an academician, she is also a political activist and the founder of the Iraqi British organization Act Together Women's Action for Iraq in 2000. She is deeply involved in the activities of the London branch of Women in Black, a worldwide network of women who are against war and violence. She has authored various books, some of which are Secularism and the State in the Middle East, The Egyptian Women's Movement 2000. New Approaches to Migration, published in 2002, Iraqi Women Untold Stories, published from 1948 to the present, published in 2007, What Kind of Liberation, Women and Occupation of Iraq, with Nicola Pratt, published in 2009. Her writing reflect the experiences of Iraqi women in the war zone and this recent struggle to raise the voices against the US-led invasion of Iraq. Najde published New Approaches to Migration in 2002, which is a critical evaluation of the contemporary migration taking place in the international arena. She has thrown light on the relationship between home and transnational communities. Earlier, the meaning of home was nostalgic for many, but the, now this trend is changing and evolving because of the advent of globalization. International migrants have now developed new globally oriented identities. In this book, she has explored these and related issues such as the meaning of home to transnational people, how social spaces are transformed and nature of their transformations. Iraqi Women Untold Stories from 1948 to the present by Najdeh is a remarkable piece of work highlighting 50 years of experience of the women of women in Iraq, their lives, aspirations, losses and the physical as well as emotional and psychological consequences of displacement. It gives the reader an insight into what the lives of people living in a country destroyed by war is like and what has been the impact of American and British armies overrunning their land. It is an individual as well as a collective account of the histories and struggles of women 
through their narratives. The book gives details of the political upheavals of a country and how a nation is devastated because of global politics. Or in other words, how Iraq became the victim of greed of powerful nations. The book is unique in itself as it covers areas ranging from development policies to gender studies and provides a multi-layered analysis and perspective, which is on not only relevant but quite indispensable to numerous schools of thought and academic disciplines. It critiques the rapid growth of violent discourse of occidental hegemonic ideologies against the oriental world. Although educated and brought up in Germany, Najde has a deep affection for the country to which she belongs. Iraq occupies a central position in her intellectual and emotional self and this is quite obvious in her writings that mostly focus on the country of her origin. Her memories of visiting her Iraqi relatives, the nostalgic memories of her childhood, the illuminating sights and sounds observations she has heard and experienced since her childhood and permeate all her work. In her narratives, she acknowledges the significance of her female rel relatives whose courage inspired her to pen down their experiences of life. She has vividly captured their knowledge of life, their warmth and culture, the political chaos and its dreadful impacts on their lives in her writings. She is committed to working for the education, economic development and emancipation of Iraqi women. Yet another writer, Zainab Salbi, has a multifaceted personality. She is an author, a human rights activist, humanitarian, social entrepreneur and a media commentator who was the founder and former CEO from 1993 to 2011 of Washington-based Women for Women International. Born in 1969 in Baghdad, Iraq, her father was a personal pilot of Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein. During Hussein's regime, her family experienced so much pro psychological abuse that she decided to dedicate her life for the cause of women around the world. At the age of 19, she migrated to the US from where she carried out her mission. She was a witness of the plight of women during the Iran-Iraq war and this led her to work for women in affected war, women affected in war. Throughout her life, she has written and spoken extensively on women affected by rape and other crimes and violence during the war. She is a prominent public figure with her extensive coverage on media outlets which include being several times on the immensely popular Oprah Winfrey show and the famous Washington Post. For her humanitarian work in Bosnia, she was honored by President Bill Clinton in 1995 at the White House. She is currently working on multimedia platforms on giving a voice to Arab and Muslim women. She is the recipient of many prestigious awards, honors and prizes which include Time Magazine Innovator for the month for her pioneering work as philanthropist, honored by President Clinton at White House in 1995, Harper's Bazaar 21st Century Heroines nominee 1993, Forbes Magazine Trailblazer Award 2005, Conrad H. Hilton Humanitarian Prize on behalf of Women for Women International 2005, World Economic Forum's Young Global Teach Leader 2007. David Rockefeller Bridge Lead Bridging Leadership Award 2010, Austin College Posey Leadership Award 2011, Harper Bazaar's 21st Century Heroine nominated by Brill Clinton, Honorary Doctorate Degree from York University 2014, one of the most influential women on Twitter, Fortune Magazine 2014, one of the most influential women on social media, Wear Your Voice 2015, one of the 100 most powerful Arab women, Arabian Business 2015. Her work includes Between Two Worlds, Escape from Tyranny, Growing Up in the Shadow of Saddam 2005, The Other Side of War, Women's Stories of Survival and Hope, published in 2006, If You Know Me, You Would Care, published in 2013. Zainab Salbi published a memoir, Between Two Worlds Escape from Tyranny, Growing Up in the Shadow of Saddam in 2005. 
which reflect her own experience of growing up in Iraq in an adverse situation under Saddam Hussein's Ba'athist regime. Between Two Worlds has been highly praised around the world according to the Publishers Weekly, the most honest account of life within Saddam's circle so far. It is an enlightening revelation of how, by barely perceptible stages, decent people make accommodations in a horrific regime. It is from a web source. The memoir recounts her stories from the gen tender age of 11 years when her father was appointed as a personal pilot to one of the dictator of the modern world, Saddam Hussein. This led to her family's association with him when they were forced to spend weekends with him so that he could watch their every movement. This was discomforting for her and her family. She was further sent by her mother to America for an arranged marriage. The marriage which was an escape from a tyrannical rule further affected her life. She faced another set of atrocities and abuse in her married life. But she did not compromise with the situation and moved on and transformed herself into a strong woman. It was at this point that she started a campaign against atrocities inflicted on women focusing mostly on war victims. She founded Women for Women International and is recognized as champion of the women survivors of war. She published The Other Side of War, Women's Stories of Survival and Hope in 2006. This memoir is very different from her previous one as it takes us to one of the takes us to the world of some of the war affected countries like Afghanistan, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Colombia, Dem Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda and Sudan. It narrates the stories of women affected by war in these countries who are facing the toughest challenges of life daily by reclaiming the lives of their families and communities destroyed as an outcome of conflict. As she states, war is not computer generated missile striking a digital map. War is the color of earth as it explodes on our faces, the sound of a child pleading, the smell of smoke and fear. Women survivors of war are not the single image portrayed in the television screen, but the glue that holds families and countries together. Perhaps by understanding women and the other side of war, we will have more humility in our discussions of war. Perhaps it is time to listen to women's side of his story. This she said in an interview on August 14, 2010. Salbi along with the photographer Reni Malfredi traveled to countries like Afghanistan, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda and Bosnia and Herzegovina, covering the stories of women war victims. They recorded the experiences colla collaboratively and If You Know we, you, Me You Would Care, which was published in 2013. The memoir reflects the experiences of those women who have overcome the worst of situation by the toughness and the spirit of survival. Salbi interviewed women who have faced the most dreadful situations and yet have survived. She wrote about their definitions of war in the hope for peace about the horrifying experiences and the struggle to survive them and finally about, finally about the optimistic attitude towards the future. While Salbi took the interviews of these courageous women, my Freddy photographed them. This is a very, very rare account as both the interview and the images together create a compelling global first person account of the experiences of women sufferers women survivors of dangerous man-made calamities. If you know me, you would care is not simply a memoir, but a celebration of strong womanhood against all odds and adverse situations. It is a journey undertaken by Zainab Salbi and Reni Mafredi to describe the atrocities of war and the incumbent poverty and to narrate the stories of women survivors to the world. These stories have had a huge impact since they are not just tales of tears, sorrows and victimhood but also of happiness, love and forgiveness. Zainab makes the following statement about the book. The women in this book are an inspiration to all of us who aspire to triumph over adversity. It is a personal peak at the most intimate as told by women who have survived war. It is a tribute to them, to their survival, their achievements and their dreams. 
I hope people everywhere will take away the powerful message of survival this book inspires. This has been taken from web source. Fatima Mercesi, Daily Al Amir, Najdesad Khalali, and Zainab Salbi are role models for women, not only in their countries but around the world. They are trailblazers and architects for peace who have survived against all odds and adverse situations. This module has tried to highlight the efforts they are making through their writings for bringing gender equality to society and showcasing the plight of women affected by military violence in the world. Their voices are voices of transformation as they advocate for more fair and just social systems for women. They write for the creation of a social order where women will not be either marginalized or subaltern creatures, but will have space to grow and contribute towards building a better world. It is through the efforts of many feminists and peacemakers like them that women have started emerging in all fields in the Middle East. The recent example we have seen is that of appointed Zekra Alwaj, a civil engineer, a mayor of Baghdad in February 2015. She is the first woman to hold such a prestigious position in a capital city in the Arab world. Although there are many women parliamentarians in some countries of the Middle East, but Iraq holds the highest percent with 25 percent seats for women candidates in the parliament which is quite remarkable in a country which is continuously facing political turmoil. The future has much, of, much to offer to women in that part of the world. For further references, I would suggest uh, the book Burnt Shadows by Shamsi Kamila, Bloomsbury Publishing, London 2009. Next, daily, Doing Daily Battle Interviews with Moroccan Women, translated by Mary Jo Lackland. And web sources, Mernesi Netbooks, another net source, UTP Press, opening next the book, Opening the Gates, an anthology of Arab feminist writing, second edition, edited by Margaret Perdon and Miriam Cook, Susanna Tarbush, new book by Najde Sadiq Al Ali, and Najde Sadiq Al Ali's Iraqi Women Under Pressure, Limon the Development, Gender and Development, Volume 16, published in 2008, Zainab Salbi's Foreign Policy, Iraq Forgotten Home, and Ga Gastel Erling book, Women in Rwanda Promote Holistic Development Through Financial Independence and Right of Awareness, Zainab Salbi's biography, Architect of Peace, One Woman's Formula for Change by Sherry Lynn. Women for Women International Retrieved by Zainab Salvi, Lecture and Transcript of Salvi's Speech at the John B. Kroc Institute of Peace. And lastly, The Other Side of War, Women for Women International Retrieved through the web, August 2010. This was my humble presentation. Thank you.